What is seven hundreds times ten? Well, let's focus first on this times ten part of our expression because multiplying by ten has some patterns in math that we can use to help us solve. One pattern we can think of when we multiply by ten is if we take a whole number and multiply it by ten, we'll simply add a zero to the end of our whole number. So for example, if we have a whole number like nine and we multiply by ten, our solution will be a nine with one zero at the end, or ninety, because nine times ten is the same as nine tens, and nine tens is ninety. So let's use that pattern first to try to solve. Here we have seven hundreds, so seven times we have a hundred, or seven hundred, and we're multiplying again times ten, use this pattern over here, our solution will add a zero at the end. So if we had seven hundred ten times, we would have seven hundred with a zero on the end, or seven thousand. So seven hundreds times ten is equal to seven thousand. But there's another pattern we could use here, another pattern to think about when we multiply by ten, and that is that when we multiply by ten, we move every digit one place value, one place value left, or one place value greater. So let's look at that one on a place value chart. Here we have a place value chart to use that earlier example when we had nine ones, and we multiplied it by ten, our nine moved one place value to the left. It moved up to the tens. Now we had nine tens. And we filled in a zero here because there were no ones left. There were zero ones left. And so we saw that nine times ten was equal to ninety. So again, it's the same as adding a zero at the end, but we're looking at it another way. We're looking at it in terms of place value and multiplying by ten moved every digit one place value to the left. So if we do that with the same question, seven hundreds, seven hundreds, if we move hundreds one place value to the left, we'll end up with thousands. So seven hundred times ten is seven thousands. Or as we saw earlier, seven thousand. So either one of these is a correct answer. Seven hundred times ten is seven thousand. And here's an example with division. Now we have dividing by ten. And as you might predict, dividing by ten is the opposite of multiplying by ten. So our patterns are also the opposite. Instead of adding a zero to the end of a whole number, we would drop a zero at the end we would drop a zero at the end. So for an example, if we had forty divided by ten, we would drop that zero and end up with four. If you divide forty into groups of ten, you have four groups. Let's use that over here. Two hundred ten, or two hundred twelve tens, so we have two hundred twelve tens, so two hundred twelve ten times, that's how we got the zero there. And we divide that by ten. We can use this first pattern we thought of and just drop the zero on the end. Let's drop that zero and our answer will be two hundred twelve. But we could also, we could use the place value pattern. We could think in terms of place value and instead of moving one place value to the left, one place value larger, we're going to move one place value sm smaller or to the right. One place value to the right. So what's one place value smaller than 212 tens? If we have 212 tens divided by 10, we want to move this tens one place value to the right or smaller, which is ones. So our solution would be 212 ones which is equal to what we already saw, simply 212. 
So 212 tens divided by 10, we could write the number out and drop a zero, or we could think about place value and move one place value to the right. Either way, our answer is 212 ones.